Hey, this is Pastor Becky. And Pastor Eddie from Transformation <laughs> Church. Even though our little logo disappeared. It disappeared. Aww. Anyway. I'm going to try and add it while he's talking. Okay, she's going to add it while I'm talking. So it's not going to distract me at all. <laughs> that she's punching all these buttons. I think there it uh, is. Hop. There we go. Oh, there By yeah. Tim Farina. Yep, that's my brother. I thought he's awesome, and I'm so glad he made that for us. Now... Is everything else going to go away? You're, yeah, just don't touch anything. I won't else. touch anything. Don't if you touch see other anything stuff, else. Don't it's... touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. <laughs> uh, go ahead, babe. You go bed, babe. Well, what happened to today, as we found out, it actually happened yesterday, um, that my husband, Pastor Eddie, his, he, his brother's wife, so our sister-in-law's baby brother, passed away at 41. And... To date, they don't even know what caused it. Um, he fell asleep, didn't wake up, and there's no sign of, you know, no, none of his regular meds missing, no sign of alcohol or anything in his system. And so um, we both felt like the same story came to us, so the Holy Spirit was speaking to us to share with you because we never know when that time is going to come. I mean, we're talking about a healthy, um, in shape, talented um, young man that absolutely is a shock to everybody and they're so they you know they're still trying to figure out what happened but um saying all that to say we don't know when our time is going to come you don't know if you have tomorrow so um that's basically what we're here to talk right. about today and again we're pastor becky and eddie from transformation church in the central florida region right now we're in apopka but and you should be able to see the logo up in the corner there <laughs> you should it's our upper right hand corner i don't know what we, it is on, on what yours. it is on your screen but it's and we also want to say um, we're looking for people to give one year uh, as a missionary to come help us plant this church. And we're in the process. By the end of the week, we should have an application online for you to look at and um, check out. And maybe before that. Okay. So the scriptures we want to look at concerning this situation is one I always use uh, when I do a funeral. So in honor of Tony's memory, we're going to yeah. go over this. And it's Luke. It didn't put the. I know it's in Luke. It didn't give me the chapter when I printed it out. But anyway, it's starting at verse 19 in Luke, book of Luke. Uh, there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torment in Hades, he, this talking about the rich man, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that they may testify, that he may testify to them, lest they come also to this place of torment. And Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them, speaking of the scripture. That's what he means when he says Abraham, Moses, and the prophets. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rises from the dead. And in these times, we always tend to focus on the person who's passed. Where did they go? Did they go to heaven? Or did they go to hell, you know? And uh, this may sound a little callous, but really that decision's been made. 
no matter what we talk about, no matter what we say, wherever Tony's at, he's already there. So what I like to focus on is what would he say to you now that he's seen that this is for real. He's already seen that there is a heaven, that there is a hell. We don't know, you know, we're not guaranteeing either either way, but he knows for sure this is for real now. And just as the rich man, I believe his concern would be let everybody you know that knows me right. that there is a heaven, there is a hell, this is for real. And make sure they know how to come to heaven or go to heaven instead of the other place that I can see is real now. So the question isn't where is Tony? The question is when is your time? Where are you going? Right. You might be 5, 6, 25, 26, 36, 46, 56, whatever. 96. Your, your age isn't the issue here because obviously 41 is a shocker to everybody 41 years old is way too early to go yes. but 41 years it, even if you live to 120 that's still just a, a vapor mm -hmm. compared to eternity that's right. still just a split second because where we're ending up what's after this life is for eternity right. so you know it's not like you can you're relatives that have left behind can pay and get you out of get you an out get out of jail free card no once you've crossed over this scripture made it clear there is a gulf between heaven and hell and those that make it to heaven cannot go visit those in hell and those in hell can't go visit those in heaven i mean that's an uncrossable gulf so once that decision's made and your time does come, that's it. Mm -hmm. So you need to decide now. You need to determine in your heart. And, and uh, it's interesting that uh, the rich man was convinced that if someone would go from the dead and appear to their family and warn them that they would believe. But Abraham made it clear, you know, if, if they won't believe the scriptures mm -hmm. that they already have, they're not going to believe even if somebody came back from the dead and talked to them. Um, so you have to listen with your heart. When you hear the scripture, your heart knows the truth. That's right. Your head may not get it. I mean, there's a lot of things in my head. <laughs> you know, sometimes my head's a scary place to be. <laughs> and it's even a little confusing place to be. And, and I'm there all the time, so... That's why when it comes to critical decisions, I go with a peace in my heart. And because my head has messed me up so many times, my head has cost me mistakes that didn't necessarily had to be made if I would have listened. Because most of the time when I've made a major mistake, something inside was going, oh, don't do that. You stay away from that. Mm -hmm. So I know for a fact, if you're watching this and you're listening, you're already, if you're not sure, that if you were to die today, you're going to heaven. Something's already speaking to your heart. Yeah. That's what you need to listen to. That's the Holy Spirit revealing the truth to you. And you just need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior so that no matter when you die, you're going to heaven for absolutely for sure. And you're going to die. Yeah, you will die. <laughs> Someday we're all going to die. Someday we're the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. Everybody's got to die at least one time. But the Bible talks about uh, separation from God for eternity, the second death. You don't want to die the second time. You want to be in the presence of God and experience eternal life with him. So if you've never done that and, and something is tugging at your heart, we just want you to pray with us. So just say, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I come to you now. I come to you now. I admit. I admit. That I'm a sinner. That I'm a sinner. That if I was to die today. That if I was to die today. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If I'd go to heaven or I'd hell. If I'd go to heaven or hell. But I want to be sure. But I want to be sure. And I thank you. And I thank you. That your word. That your word. Promises. Promises. That you have paid the price. That you have paid the price. And given me the free gift. And given me the free gift. Of eternal life. Of eternal life. 
life if I accept it. If I accept it. So I come to you. So I come to you to accept your free gift. To accept your free gift. To accept eternal life. To, ex to accept eternal life. I invite you in. I invite you in to my heart. To my heart. To my life. To my life. Come and teach me of you. Come and teach me of you. I open myself. I open myself to your Holy Spirit. To your Holy Spirit. To make me. To make me the man or woman of God. The man or woman of God that you would have me to be. That you would have me to be. And I thank you, Jesus. And I thank you, Jesus. That if I were to die, that if I were to die right now, right now, or in the near future, or in the near future, or years from now, or years from now, I'm going to heaven I'm to be going, with you. I'm going to heaven to be with you. And yes, it is that simple by receiving what Jesus did, because He did all the hard work. He came down here and lived the perfect life, and then He allowed. Nobody could take his life. He had to give it. He allowed them to crucify him to pay the price for all of our sins. And you can be free from the guilt and the punishment of your sin. It's like getting the governor's call at the last minute and giving you a stay of execution and being pardoned from everything you've done. So, yay! Woohoo! You're yay! free! <laughs> so... This is cool. So when you get to heaven, you can look Tony up and say, hey, it's it's when you passed too early that I heard the message and I got saved. Yep. And we amen. Just, yep. Tony's, Tony's death just became way more valuable. You know, we, we, all, we always want to use what the devil meant for harm and turn it around for good in yep. Jesus' name. And again, if you're ever in the Central Florida area... I'm Pastor Becky. I'm Pastor Eddie <laughs> from Transformation. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are married. <laughs> and we're co-pastors. Don't tell anybody, but I sleep with my pastor. <laughs> <laughs> and so do I. If, you, if that offends you, you probably don't want to come yeah. to our church. Not you, too, not you're a little too religious. <laughs> Pray that God get that religious stuff off of you first, and then you'll fit right in. Right. Um, but we do. We love people. We love you, and we want to invite you to become a part of our family. We, not our guest, not our visitor, but a part of the family. Yeah. And um, and we all are, and that's what's really neat. We're a part of the family of God, and um, Jesus Christ is our elder brother. And we've just got so much, so many blessings to be thankful for. So if you come to see Mickey Mouse and, or Universal or, or Goofy. Goofy or any of these things, um, yeah, he likes Goofy. Um, <laughs> um, but if you're coming to visit, at least stop by and, and, and see us. And if you're, you live in the Central Florida area, please come. And then I don't know when you're watching this, but whenever you watch this, um, because we're planting this church and we're on the grow, we might be at a different location than Opopka, um, Florida at this time. So if you come, ch check our website and find out where we are. We want, and we do want to invite you to come and be a missionary for one year. One year. Um, what does that mean? At least. At least, yeah. We'd like to keep you forever. And for, you know, for as long, no, some of you may become part of part of the full-time staff. But, but um, seriously, it's a one-year commitment. You have to raise your own funds. You don't get paid anything. You are, just like any other missions trip you went on, um, it's at your expense. But you cannot outgive God, and I know that the benefits and the blessings are going to far outweigh anything it costs. What feel, and we went over the, yesterday the fact that if you're afraid, um, you know, you, you know, you'd like to come, but, 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 um, the devil is not the one that's telling you to come be a, a missionary. Um, we can guarantee you that he he doesn't want you to come and be a part. So you um, do whatever it takes to get here. Anything else? Nope. Oh, Okay, well, we love you. Have a great day. Have a great day. Bye-bye. And I have to figure out how to turn this off now because we did this totally different. Do you know? Hmm. We might not be able to stop this thing. <laughs> Seriously. Let's see if this works.